Uh, thanks very much for coming down. And uh, as you said, Giles' works uh, over here on the wall and in the, in the back room. Um, I'm going to copy Tony and just uh, start by introducing uh, Giles from the blurb we have in the catalogue. Yep. Uh, Giles Alexander, space, time and the sacrosanct are all fodder for Alexander's investigation into the sacred and the profane. Cathedral interiors are limbed with distortions that appear to be the result of technological processes. Computers, logic machines, the ultimate expression of the Enlightenment project, seem to be facilitating a destruction of the imagery of the Enlightenment's old enemy, the Catholic Church. Um, I, think, I think those words are especially appropriate probably for the uh, cathedral series yes. that you just <laughs> did. <laughs> And, uh, and the new series... I'm not so appropriate for... Well, I think it, it touches on it because the Enlightenment yeah. is, still very, is still very central, I think. Thanks, Tony. Um, and uh, and I'm, I, I think uh, that I'm right in saying that architecture is still very central to yeah. uh, what you're concerned with in the new works. I think space... I think more broadly, um, I, I am really interested with spaces. Um, I guess that has manifest predominantly in my work as architecture, and I kind of have always used architecture as um, a vehicle to kind of say or address certain kind of ideas and issues. So with, with the religious um, architecture, obviously I was interested with, you know, the theological debate uh, that we currently have and its historical kind of precedents and how... Are you, are you talking specifically to Richard Dawkins uh, and the anti-Richard Dawkins? I guess uh, not specifically. I mean, I think that comes into it. And I'm really mm. interested in people like him. But I, I'm, I think more broadly, I th that body of work specifically came out of, I guess, you know, post 911 and, mm. um, you know, ideas that, you know, we still struggle with acceptance and tolerance across kind of inter inter religious um, tolerance um, you know there's still this standoff um, across across you know internationally um, even though we profess to be you know enlightened and what that means um, whether there what the dialogue is and um, whether though whether science and religion can co coexist and technologies and yeah so do you think they so, can do you think they can coexist well I don't know. I mean, I, it's more a question, you know, really, that I, I don't profess to have the answers. Because um, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite interested in the relationship between a painting like this one of yeah. the uh, Saturn, Saturn, is that right? Yeah. Saturn V rocket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, the, and the cathedral type paintings yeah. that, that yeah. you did, because I think there's a, you know, obviously there's a connection which is what yeah, you're there, leading to. Yeah, there is. And yeah. the connection for me really is that they're, they're all kind of means for man to explore his position within the environment that he finds himself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, where once we built large cathedrals and we still do build religious buildings, we, you know, now build um, big cathedrals to science and, you know, something like the Saturn V rocket is is kind of part of that as obviously is a large I guess project, a project on an equivalent scale yeah, to a, a exactly. medieval cathedral. Yeah, and it's yeah. really about man trying to understand his position, mm -hmm. you know, that he, you know, the position that we inhabit. Because, of course, you've done a couple of works dealing with the Large Hadron yeah, Collider yeah. as well, which is very much the same. Yeah, kind of, absolutely. Yeah, you know, kind of that definitely strikes me as, you know, the contemporary version of, you know, the great cathedrals of Europe. Mm. You know. Yeah, and so, and so do your interest in uh, natural history type museums um, as well. But yeah, again, uh, museums for me function as, as spaces where man is overtly trying to kind of wrestle with identity, his mm. own sense of self. Yeah. You know, museums, galleries, religious buildings, for me they all kind of fall under the one umbrella, weirdly. Yeah, 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 I think... Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's maybe a bit of a stretch, but... No? It might be. Hmm. No, no, <laughs> no I, go, I, go with you. I go with you on that. Um, I'm, also, I'm also interested in the, um, the work in the back, the, the Bill Henson... Yep, um, yep reference yeah um, and what you brought into play there with mm -hmm. the you know with, with providing the, the reproduction of the work uh, alongside yeah. the original yeah okay uh, what's going on there then well the work the work specifically I, um, I was interested really in the in the media's handling of 
the Bill Hansen affair rather than the actual image itself or him as a photographer, as an artist itself. I was much more interested in um, you know, how the media handled it and the kind of double standard involved there. Um, but for me, having a reproduction there um, was, you know, I, I like that because my work is very indebted to, you know, mechanical and digital reproduction. Um, but at the same time, I'm very obsessed with kind of traditional handmade approaches. So um, that's, that's something that goes, you know, it's re reoccurring and goes around and around in my work. And so to actually have, you know, the original painting, which of course is a painting after a photograph, mm. and then the print of the original painting, you know, it's this kind of circular kind of conversation that goes around, circular argument, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and, it's, and it kind of goes to something that um, I think was, was prominent in your practice a few years ago, which was the use of um, especially mass media, mass yeah, media yeah. images. Yeah. Um, and it was very much focused on, especially I think, print and electronic media, yeah. and where that, where that source material comes That's from. Right. And, the, and I guess the life, the life of those images um, away from their, their source. Yeah. Um, so it comes, it comes back into, into that, I think. Um, are, you, are you almost suggesting that, uh, that the images become um, a part of the markers of our, um, uh, what could you call it, um, markers of our civilization? And what I'm, what I'm thinking of now is the works that you've done which deal with uh, artworks in museums mm. which you yep. know, come to represent you know, those, those sort of turning points, the shifts in consciousness, yep. uh, and whether you're making some claim for, for these images as well. Well, uh, you know, I think we're, you know, Im image status is virtually mm. omnipotent now. You know, we're, it, we're, so much of our understanding of the world around us is, is um, tran translated to us or... Um, we, we digest through 2D imagery. I mean, we, we, you know, we travel and we look, you know, we look around physically, but a lot of our idea of the world around us is, um, you know, through the media. Mm. So, you know, the status of the image is really of interest to me and, and that's really where that work came from. Um, and every so often, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of pick on a more specific subject mm. um, and, you know, uh, explore that idea, and that's that was the case with the, the Bill Henson yeah. piece. Yeah, great. Well, I think we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. So, sort of make room some room for Carrie Miller, okay. uh, Giles. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>